Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Lorraine Macar, and today I'm going to do a review. I don't usually do these because I don't watch them myself, so it seems weird to film them. But I've been thinking lately that maybe I should try these. That this might be fun. And I wanted to talk about this book a little bit longer. So what the book that I want to talk about is uh, The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. It's the prequel to the Kingsbrook trilogy that I have here. So the Kingsbrook trilogy starts with the pillars of the earth, then we've got the world without end, and it ends with a column of fire. Now all of these four, let's see if I can hold them up in one go. It's gonna be tough because they're big little books. Yeah. Yes, this was worth it, right? Um, these books are all set in middle in the middle <laughs> these books are all set in the middle ages in uh england and this one being a prequel is in the dark ages which is really interesting i don't know a lot about the dark ages most people don't which is the reason that they're called the dark ages uh so it was good to have something that is you know set in a familiar setting because we go back to the area surrounding Kingsbridge and we learn a little bit more about uh, life at that time. So the plot, let's start with that. We follow four characters. One is a young man who uh, him and his family after a Viking attack have to start over completely. They go to a place called Dren's Ferry. Now he's very intelligent. Today we would call him an engineer. That time he was a builder. And when his brothers marry, uh, he becomes the town ferryman in a boat that he has built himself. Now the area that he lives in is ruled by an alderman and his family. And that alderman marries at that same period of time a young woman called Ragnar. Uh, she's from Normandy and she's another character that we read from uh, because through her we see her life with the alderman, so in the alderman re, and, and as she struggles with her husband and his family who have this power. He, uh, so the alderman and his brothers form this trio uh, of harsh men who just want to stay in power. So that's one of the other characters that we follow is the alderman's brother who is a bishop and he's one of those bishops that whores, that gambles, that uh, is doing a lot of fishy things and putting his own family also in charge in other places and he does that at Drenks Ferry and that's where the fourth character comes in. He's a young monk who kind of smells that something fishy is going on at Drenks Ferry and tries to do something about it. And that actually brings me into how this book ties in with the rest of the trilogy. Because these books, you don't need, if you know the trilogy, you'll know this, you don't need to read one to understand the other at all. Let me see what the time frame is like. Um, this one is set, oh there's a map, I read this one on audio. This one starts in nine, 997. Then we've got The Pillars of the Earth is set, uh, starts in 1123. So you see there's a, quite a gap between the two. Uh, World Without End, 1327, so another 200 years later. And all four uh, follow a longer period of time. So it starts in, so this one starts in 1558. So again, another 200 years later. Uh, and you follow these characters for a longer period of time. And as I was going to say, the way they tie in is that not only you are in the same place, but the characters are exactly the same. <laughs> so in this one, you start with a builder um, who is like just like in this one. So you've got this builder. He's a young man. Uh, he goes through some time where um, he's not really... People don't really give him the uh, respect that he should get with all of his intelligence um, but you know being smart and good and not vindictive we will get there we've got a strong intelligent young woman who through who we see more of the political lifestyle um, somehow she always gets raped uh, then we have a corrupted person that is in the um, religion side of things, always a little bit higher up, always the main bad guy. 
and we also always have a good Christian person who uh, tries to to clash with that, the political side and making sure that everything is good and blah blah. You always have these four characters and even the side characters I could remember the the mother of the of the builder in this one, she's a strong woman as well who uh, who t kind of takes over, she's like the intelligent part of the, the duo that she forms with her husband. Also a character that you see in the other books. There's even the sidekick of the of the bad bishop. Even has the same character, is, is the same in all four books, so... I don't know, on the one hand it's good because you know what you're gonna get when you go to these books. On the other, they are so the same. You could put Ragnar in this one, in this book, and it'll be exactly the same. It's like, gave your characters a little bit more depth, come on! Anyway, what do we learn in this book surrounding the area? Um, now, at this time, it was interesting for me to see that Vikings were a big thing. I was kind of vaguely aware, but Vikings apparently even were like staying in Normandy so that then they could easily go to England and that is one of the reasons that uh, Ragnar, the uh, Norman uh, strong young woman, uh, ma is married to the alderman of Shiring is because then they have this pact with uh, her husband in Cherbourg, her husband, her father in Cherbourg, that he won't allow the Vikings to stay there to attack England. Uh, so yeah, you see how all these people are living under the threat of Vikings at all point. Uh, you see their lifestyle, you see a little bit of the politics. Uh, not so much. You see that throughout the series how the world kind of grows and now it, it's still pretty small. You see a little bit what's linked with the local politics but not that much. Um, you see how the slaves were used at that time. The slaves at that time were mostly uh, Welsh and Scottish and Irish, uh, they would just go wherever and whoever they felt like, oh yeah, you're gonna be my slave, they kind of just took with them. And so you don't only see what kind of people they were, but also how they were treated. You see a little bit of the power of the church at that point, which was very big, um, and the power of the aldermanry in such a cycle. Um, so yeah, it's just time at that period. And what I like about these books, because despite the characters being the same and therefore the plot also being very similar, what I like about these books is that you do... the plot and the place are interwoven nicely. You don't see plot points or you don't see things at the time that you think, what is that doing there? I don't need this information. Or you don't see plot points that you can't figure out what they're like. Yes, things do go a little bit easily. Uh, yes, the, the, you know very clearly what the power struggles are. There's no, there's not a lot of depth to them. It's still, it's still done in a very clear, very good way. And that's really what I like and why I would recommend these books is because they are very solid. Maybe their solidity makes that they aren't very... There's no very big surprises, but, you know, sometimes it's good. It's good to stay. I was reading this one on audio before I bought it. It's just good to stay 20 hours in a thing that is going to be solid. Good. So, yes, I would recommend these. Like I said, you don't have to read this in order. It does help. I, what I liked is seeing how Kingsbridge is kind of built up in this book a little bit more. You kind of see the origin of Kingsbridge, which is nice. Anyway, let me know if you've read this book, how you like them, how you like the contrast also between the books. Have you read this one? Are you going to read it? Um, do you have a favorite between the four? I have, I'm not going to talk about the other books because I think I've read them in previous wrap-ups, so I'll link those videos down here. Uh, but yeah, let me know. I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.